In today's video, I'm gonna go through the top 10 deadliest aggressive shots that you can use in pickleball. They aren't always the smartest, but if you use them correctly, they'll win you points guaranteed. Make sure to watch to the end because the last shot on this list has literally a 95% win rate. So at number 10 on our list, we have the poach. But what is a poach? A poach is when you cross over to your partner's side, usually while you're at the net, and you hit a volley that you usually go really hard on and win the point with. So the only time that this situation arises in pickleball is generally when you're up and your partner is back. So if you ever find yourself like this with your partner, your opponents might be thinking, okay, I don't want to hit to the guy that's standing up. I want to hit to the guy that's back. So what you can do is you can be smart and anticipate this by crossing over. I'm gonna show you how that looks right now. So what happened there was I used my drop to come in, right? And once I got here, I noticed that my partner was still back. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, he wants to hit back to him, right? So when I notice that, I cross over, and that's when I kill the shot. Generally, you want your partner to come up with you, but because he didn't in that situation, I got the opportunity to poach. So at number nine on our list, we have the screwball return, which looks like this. All I'm doing here is hitting a normal forehand return, but I'm cutting to the side, which gives me side spin and makes the ball curve a little bit. It also makes the bounce slightly more unpredictable. So when you do this, the third shot can become more difficult for your opponents. So it looks like this. See how that bounce kind of jetted off that way and the ball's path curved a little bit? That can throw your opponents off just enough so that they miss their third shot. This isn't something I recommend using every point, but I have been seeing a lot more pros use it lately. So try it out and see if it works for you. So while we're in the theme of screwballs, at number eight on the list, I have the screwball serve, which looks like this. So by using that same cutting motion to the side like this, which I just showed you on the return, you could actually make your serve curve to the right if you're a righty. It'll go to the left if you're a lefty. So I'll show you again what that looks like. If you're trying to be the best possible player, your default serve should be the heavy topspin, which looks like this. But the screwball serve is the number one way to throw in a changeup. So just like the screwball return, I would only use this every once in a while. At number seven on our list, we have a little bit more specific of a shot. I'm talking about a speed up that you hit from the left side, low to your opponent's forehand in front of you. The shot can be highly effective. So usually this happens in a sequence where you start off in a cross court dinking rally. Dinking cross court is usually smarter. And then when you get a slightly higher ball, you speed it up low at that forehand right in front of you. So looking at the player I just hit the ball to, they're sort of on this leg, right? Because they've been watching the ball go cross court with their partner. So it can be really surprising if you go right here at them. And it might take a lot of movement for them to get their paddle into position in time. Let's see how that looks again. That's not the only spot that you can target in that situation, but a lot of really good players do that because it works really well. And guys, do you know what this shot is? <sighs> well, it'll win you a ton of points, so stay tuned if you wanna learn it. At number six on our list though, we have the drive down the middle, which looks like this. So a lot of the time on your third shot, you're gonna choose to drive and not drop. And one of the best targets to aim those drives is right down the middle, because you can really confuse your opponents as to which one of them should cover. So regardless of whether you're hitting a forehand or backhand drive, this is an awesome way to confuse your opponents and get some free points on your serve. And a lot of the time when you hit a good drive, your opponents will give you a little bit of a floater ball. You can actually anticipate that shot and move forward to crush it like this. So at number five on our list, we have the crash, which is what I just did. So if you see that your drive went super low, you can creep forward a little bit. And if you see that ball's popped up, you move forward even more to crush the ball. Your opponents won't pop up the ball every time though, so be careful about being too aggressive moving forward. Like I said, creep in a little bit if it's good and wait till you see that shot's gonna be nice and easy to crash. And if you like the crash, make sure to crash the like and subscribe button because we're making cooler and cooler videos every week. If you want to improve, you need to be consistently studying the game and our channel is the best way to do that. At number four on our list though, we have one of the most fundamental shots in all of pickleball you have to have this shot to get to an advanced level. I'm talking about the aggressive topspin roll. So if your opponents ever hit a slower ball, maybe they're going for a drop, and you're gonna make contact with the ball in this range. What you can do is go for an aggressive topspin roll volley. 
So at this height, you can't really go for a full on overhead smash. So what you can do though, is use top spin to curve the ball over the net. So like this, it's a very wristy shot. So if you don't have the technique for it, you just need to practice brushing up on the ball. And you can do this on the forehand side, like I just did, and the backhand side too. So a lot of the time when you hit this, you're actually leaning deep over the kitchen, right? Because you're trying to get that ball out of the air like that. If you don't have this shot in your game, like I said, it's super important. So make sure you start practicing it. All right, we've arrived at our top three most deadly shots on this list. So at number three, we have the Ernie off of the down the line dink, which looks like this. So if you can ever anticipate that the player in front of you is going to dink down the line, you can actually go for the Ernie where you jump over the kitchen, get closer to the net and kill the ball. If you ever watch pros, they try to do this shot all the time. To do an effective Ernie though, you need to make sure that you're jumping on a dink that is going to be close to the sideline, okay? And one of the best ways to anticipate that is to try to Ernie on a down the line dink from the player right in front of you. To set this up, try to aim for a dink deeper to the player in front of you's outside shot, like that. And you see in that situation, you can get the ball behind them, which makes it difficult for them to dink cross court. And you can anticipate that to jump over and go for the Ernie. And guys, if you find the jumping motion of the Ernie a little bit too physical, it can be pretty hard to jump that far to clear the kitchen. What you can actually do is essentially run around the kitchen like that and go for the Ernie, which I'll show you how that looks. So you still have to move pretty quickly, but it's a lot less physical than having to clear the entire kitchen. All right. At number two, we have the crouching kitchen overhead smash, which looks like this. So a lot of the time when you get a higher shot, it's a little bit too high to go for a roll volley, but a little bit too low to go for a formal overhead where you hit the ball up here. So what you can do is crouch down a little bit and try to hit an overhead from a lower position like this. If you watch high level pickleball, you know that a lot of points end with one of those shots. So it's essentially what you hit when the ball is slightly higher than where you'd hit on your roll volley. So the roll ball is like right here in this range. Once you start getting up here, then you start going for that crouch down overhead, which you can get a lot more power on. So on the crouch down overhead, you lead with the elbow more. On the roll ball, you lead with the paddle more. All right, we've arrived at our deadliest shot on the list. The ATP. So the ATP is where we hit the ball below the height of the net around the post. Let me tell you, if you hit this shot well, there's a very low chance that it'll come back. So essentially it just looks something like this. The main thing that will determine your success in this shot is whether you have the right opportunity to go for it. So look at these two examples here and try to determine which one you think is the better opportunity to go for the ATP. If you said example A, you're right. To hit a good ATP, you need to make sure that the ball you're going for it on is far enough off the court so you can draw a line from where you're making contact around the post into the court. If it's not far enough off the court and you try to go for it, you're gonna hit it straight into the net because you can't curve the ball around the post. Hey guys, if you wanna be able to beat 99% of players, you need to know the four strategies that I talk about in this video here.